Welcome back to the OHIO Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Buckeye Boggs. That man over there is the wild man, Chris Wilds, and you are you, and we're thankful that you joined us this evening for today's video. Chris, this is the season. It's Easter's almost upon us, and a part of the Easter story is the betrayal of Jesus Christ. When Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, betrayed him with a kiss for some silver, as the story goes in biblical times. Well, we might have our own Judas in Columbus, Ohio, in the form of running back coach Tony Alford, who left the program today and is now the running backs and running game coordinator for the team up north. The last time a coach left one of these two teams for the other, that was back in 2019. Al Washington and uh, what's his name? Yeah, there you go. Greg Madison left the team up north and joined Ryan Day's staff in 2019 as a new head coach at Ohio State in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm sure the emotions that that fan base felt then are pretty similar to the emotions that this fan base feels now. You can leave this program. You can go and coach other places, especially if you get an opportunity to become a head coach like Wilson did going to Tulsa, right? Mm -hmm. It's a step up. Yeah. Um, but a lateral move for maybe a little bit more money, possibly, to your rival, who you have been trying to beat and coach against since you've been here since the beginning of 2015, seems like a real slap in the face to – his players, to Ryan Day, and to this fan base. I'd like to get your raw initial reactions, Chris, before we dive into the nuts and bolts of why this happened and where do we go from here. Well, let me tell you, Eric, this, this was not a slap in the face. and you, you mentioned nuts and bolts. Let me tell you, this was not a slap in the face. This was a kick to the groin. Uh, you know, I, I don't have all the information. You know, I, I've heard some rumors about what could have possibly led to this. Uh, but, you know, I really find it unsettling, uh, given everything that's happened at Michigan, that he would want to go be a part of that. Uh, I would like to think that Ohio State coaches hold themselves to a higher standard and have a bit more integrity than to go to a program that is, you know, mired in cheating allegations and all, all the all the other stuff that's going on up there. Um, that being said, it is Ohio State. We're going to move past this. And, and honestly, I think eventually we're going to be better for it as well. Um, you know, Al Alfred's been a serviceable coach. I thought he's done a decent job. I think our run game has struggled at times over the last few years. Um, even given all the talent we've gotten, uh, we've had a lot of injury issues. And for me, you know, Alford has been a decent recruiter, but I've never considered him a great recruiter. So does it hurt? Absolutely it hurts. Is it insurmountable to, to overcome this? No, absolutely not. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, who's to say this maybe wasn't something that was on the table when Chip Kelly signed on? Maybe Chip wants to bring his guys, one of his guys in. Maybe, uh, you know, there's there's some accountability there that we don't know about. Who knows? Maybe there's a relationship breakdown between him and the running backs. I don't know. But... Uh, yeah, for him to leave and go to Michigan was just, again, if he was taking a promotion, that's one thing, but to move to a lateral move and move up there, I think it was distasteful and really, you know, it, I think betrayal is a good word. If you woke up this morning and you had nine-year running back coach Tony Alford leaves for rival 
after the off season we have had in Columbus, Ohio on your bingo card, pat yourself on the back. You you are a genius. Okay? Yeah, I didn't see it coming. No one saw this coming. Nobody. And the reason being is because he had a contract extension mm -hmm. that he did not sign. And none of us knew that. That's one of the things I I want to find out. Some hopefully someone with the media's got the cojones to ask Ryan if he knew. Number one, did you know he didn't sign? And if you didn't, why did you not know? Uh, that would be on the athletic department, Gene Smith, in particular, uh, for not informing his head coach that one of his a main assistant coaches hadn't signed the contract extension yet. Gene Smith made a mistake. Yeah. Imagine that. <clears throat> if Ryan day didn't know that that is totally on Gene Smith, that needs yeah. to be addressed. If Ryan day did know that he hadn't signed, why was he allowed to start coaching last week for the beginning of spring football? That now, needs to be asked to Ryan. Here, here is something I would say, Eric, and I don't know how. Again, I don't know how true it is. I have heard that Ryan Day has spent an abnormal amount of time with the running backs this. Spring. I read that as well. I read that as well. Um, that that, but that's that's that could now, be just. Was that just him taking a more active role as CEO, or was there maybe something a little more? Yeah, I don't know. That's 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 an interesting take. Let's take a look at Tony Alford's exit letter, to, if you want, if you can call it that. I mean, this is this is sad. All right, let's begin. Thank you. The last nine years have been nothing short of amazing, and there are so many people to thank and acknowledge. For fear of leaving anyone out, I will intentionally only name six individuals by name. But those of you who know, well, you know, I want to specifically thank. Urban Meyer and Gene Smith for giving me the opportunity to come here back in the Febu in February of 2015. I want to thank Ryan Day and numerous members of the coaching staff and support staff within the Woody. So many lifelong friendships have been formed, and I am appreciative of you all. I found it interesting, Chris. He mentioned Urban first. Urban and, and Gene Smith, and both who are now gone. Before the current coach. mentioning Ryan Day. Yeah. Found that interesting. Um, maybe I shouldn't read into that. Maybe that's just how I just went in chronological order based off a timeline for him. Okay, whatever. But, I mean, it does appear to, if you just read between the lines here, he is an urban guy and not necessarily a Ryan guy. Yeah. And that's not right. That's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that at all, you know? Uh, you know, I'm sure all of us have our dreathers, right? Like, we've all but, had coaches in the past that we acknowledge bet more than others. But would a real urban guy go to that team up north? No. Exactly. And that was going to be my next point was how do you mention the guy – who preached not giving that team an inch and then going to that team. You just don't do that. Yeah. So I can't imagine Urban's happy with where he went and then mentioning him in his exit letter. I just can't imagine yeah. that. He goes on to talk about Dublin High School and the community he lived in in Dublin and his uh, his boys having great success there uh, in, du in the Dublin School District. I won't read into that. Let's go to paragraph number four. The shortest paragraph in this thing outside of his little exit uh, sentence at the very end. And this one's addressed to you and me and the rest of Buckeye Nation. He's got one thing to say to us. To Buckeye Nation, the support you give this program has been second to none, and it's appreciated. Thank you. Well, that was heartfelt, Eric. <clears throat> Who wrote that not, one for him? Not the appreciation and support you've given me. Yeah. And you know why he didn't say that? Because he knew where he was going. Yeah. He is getting lambasted on social media from Buckeye Nation 
And he for, should be. For not having – oh, yeah, absolutely. For not having the the testicular fortitude to state where he's going. Failing to mention why he's leaving and where, where he's going to. And and it's it, every bit of vinegar that is being thrown his way from Buckeye Nation, in my opinion, is well-deserved. Absolutely. Now, the most important people, now to the most important people, the players. You guys have had such an amazing impact on me, not only as a coach, but also as a father and as a man. I thank you and your family so much for allowing me to be a small part of your journey. I can only hope that I made half as much an impact on you all as you have on me. Watching so many of you grow to become the man, the men that you have become makes me so proud. Thank you guys, and I hope and pray that all of your success are as great as your dreams and goals. All of that being said, as I will undoubtedly miss so many things about being a member of the Buckeye football family, I am excited about what the future holds as I embark on the next chapter of this journey. Best wishes of wishes to all, Tony Alford. Chris, your initial reaction to this well-written yet strategically stated exit letter that has some glaring holes. Well, your publicist did a very good job, Mr. Alford. Let me just tell you that there, because he knew just how to dance around the minefield. Uh, I thought it was insincere. I thought at times it was, as you said, posed more questions than given answers. And let me just go on a side note and say, man, if you thought I despised Marcus Freeman. <laughs> Mar Marcus does, Freeman, does Tony Marcus Alford just, say, hold, just said, hold my beer. Hold my beer. So, Mark, does, does that lessen the sting of Marcus Freeman for you, buddy? I don't know if it lessens the sting or just gives me a place to redirect my anger. Okay. I just, I, I don't know what to do with it. I really, how do you, again, how do you leave a program like Ohio State for a dirty program? How do you leave a program that just got through the transfer portal, one of the top running backs in the nation to go with, by the way, one of the top running backs in the nation? Mm -hmm. You've you're got going, a loaded you're going room. For, you're going for a national championship. Your, your room is yes. absolutely loaded. With Chip and Kelly in there, your run game is going to excel. You're going he to, knows how to call the run. You're going to a team that might not even have an opportunity to play in the postseason for multiple years. You might have less scholarships to use to go out and recruit with. Like, there is, there is this move was personal. Yeah, absolutely. Do, this was not a this was not a business move. If, if he loves money so much that he's leaving for fifty thousand dollars more or something like that. Yeah. What? No. Well, I'll tell you what. If it was only fifty thousand dollars, I'm sure there's some other universities out there that would have came up with that. Sure. I mean, he's. I know he was connected to the LSU job at one time. Yep. Um, and Ohio State matched and then went a little more to keep him. He's been connected with other jobs at, at with big name program, excuse me, big name programs at times. And Ohio State has always changed his title and given him a little bit more money. And UCLA might need a running back coach right now. Yeah. Um, so I don't understand if people are saying that's ah, simply for the money. I don't understand. No. That. I don't. I don't get that. I know he wants to be a head coach. He has talked about that. He didn't get the Colorado State job, and that's his alma mater. And I know that that hurt him. He really wanted that job. He, 
and he wasn't given that job. And I think that that stung him a little bit. I can't imagine that he feels that this lateral move is going to springboard him to get a head coaching job. Unless he thinks that Sharon Moore's head is on the line right now, too, and that he might get an interim stake in the the team would be the only I can't thing. I can't imagine that all of a sudden, if things go down like that, that he's going to get to be the one to get stepped in when he just moved to the program. Well, Eric, everybody's just moving to the program. Jim Harbaugh stole every damn coach they had. Not everyone. <laughs> okay, everyone you know, that was worth about anything. Half, about half. But I just can't imagine. Like, I, I don't know. I think that is that's that's a it's a reach. Dream. It's yeah, a reach. It's a reach. It's a reach. All right. Here's the rumor. This is again. We need to have like a rumor bell so people don't comment. Oh, a little flashing, are, little flashing thing the bottom this of the it's, This is a rumor. We're not making this up. I've read this, but it is a rumor. The rumor is that when Ryan Day had the opportunity a year ago to put a new offensive coordinator in place. And as you recall, he went with Brian Hartline over him, over Tony Alfred, that Tony Alfred took that personally. Oh, he got his feelings hurt? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, poor baby. So, but here's my response to him. If that rumor's true, Brian Hartline is recruiting circles around you, big boy. How many running Not backs any, yeah. did we have committed who have decommitted in the past five, six seasons? Who was his last great running back? J.K.? J.K. Dobbins. Um, I think Travion Henderson has the opportunity to have a great year, but he's underwhelmed through three seasons, has he not? Can't stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he, he cannot take credit for Ezekiel Elliott. He came in in Zeke's thir- uh, third year. And he was already a superstar at that point. Zeke was already established, so he can't take credit for Zeke. Weber, he was serviceable. Yeah. Was not a great Ohio State running back. J.K. Dobbins, he was great. Yes. He gets credit for J.K. But how much of that was – he gets credit for recruiting him, but how much of that was – And developing. Well, yeah. But it makes you wonder when you look at the development of these guys that we've had recently that – have you, as you've said, have underwhelmed and injury prone, and they're injury prone. How much of that was just J.K.'s natural talent versus that's a good, development? I mean, that's a good question. I mean, you and I both absolutely love Master Teague the third. Yes, but he 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 had some injury problems. I, I, was, I absolutely love Master Teague. I thought he was yep. a beast. Yep, but again, you can't I don't take think credit we're... for Trey Sermon because that guy came over from Oklahoma. Correct, and you and he can't take credit for uh, Master Teague's. The man. I'm sorry. Yes. He can't. That has to do with Master Teague the second. Okay. And and the, and the upbringing that Master Teague uh, the third. By the way, I read his book. We had him. We had Master Teague on. He talked to us about his book. You will not find in his book any mention of Tony Alford. Not surprised. You hear him mention Urban quite a bit. He mentioned Urban by name well, multiple times. You, you on can't our, be on around show. Urban for a day and not mention Urban. How you, you know, that many years you're going to mention Urban? Okay, so, but here's my point: nine seasons, Chris. Yep. He developed one great running back. Yes. In nine seasons, how many great wide it receivers? Has not been a shortage of talent, Eric. That's the big thing. The Correct. talent is there. Correct. And now I, again, this is not maybe a fair comparison because you, you can play up to three or four wide receivers at one time. Usually you're only playing one running back. But but they're all great, Eric. All his receivers are great. Just about. Just about. I his, mean, even, his even sixth, the ones. His sixth and seventh guy would be starting anywhere else in the country. Even the ones who aren't great transfer and are the number one receivers it's, on that yeah. team. Julian Fleming. Okay. So, but my point is this. You don't look at Tony Alford and Brian Hartline and think, well, I got to give it to Tony because he's been here longer. Seniority means nothing, means nothing in coaching. Performance is everything. Yes. Cut and dry. 
knowledge, performance, communication, the ability to uh, be a politician, a CEO, if you will. Um, Ryan Day was not going to put the play calling in the hands of someone he didn't trust. He even, let's be honest, Brian Hartline was OC and title only. Yes, yes. So if he's really, if his feelings were hurt that bad about that, all I got to do is, I got to say, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we've addressed the contract. He didn't sign it. Who knew he didn't sign it? Why was he allowed to continue coaching without signing it? These are questions that need to be answered. The rumor is, is he, he wanted to be the OC and was not chosen to do that. The next rumor, Chip Kelly comes in. Well, first Bill O'Brien, then Chip, Chip Kelly. I wonder if when Bill O'Brien left and he wasn't even interviewed or considered again, if he thought to himself, that's it, I'm out of here. And he got so angry that when the opportunity came open for him to possibly be the running backs coach and running in coordinator at the rival, he said, I'm going to do that because of spite. And if that's the case, then that's a huge character flaw on your part. And I say good riddance. Yeah, you're right. Because you know what? If you wanted to leave, if your feelings were hurt and you wanted to leave, that's fine. You know what? I bet you could have talked to Bill O'Brien. I bet he could have used a running back coach. Why, not why not go to Boston College? Not enough money, man. You know, I mean, if you wanted to be, like I said, if you wanted to be a running back coach anywhere else, I'm okay sure. with it. Oh, yeah. Like you said, if he this went was to, a vengeful if he, if, Like if move. he would have said, hey, Bill O'Brien's hiring me to be the OC at Boston College, Buckeye Nation would have been like, oh, Good luck, man, Tony. but hey, awesome. All right, we, we understand. You get to, you're moving up, you get to be the OC. The fact you did a lateral move up north to Ann Arbor is a complete slap in the face. It's Judas kissing Christ. That's what you have done. You have betrayed Ryan Day. You have betrayed this fan base. You've betrayed this university. You have betrayed those players that you mentioned. And don't think they're going to forget that the last week of November. Denzel Burke, did you see his comments on Twitter from this? Oh, I can only imagine because Denzel's been quite outspoken. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of players who who don't appreciate this at all. Like, this was a complete All, all he did game. was add fuel to an already raging fire. So, the jealousy for Chip Kelly. Here's the other rumor. He doesn't like Chip Kelly's offense. I don't know if I believe that one. Maybe, he, I mean. How can well, you not like a guy who's going to come in and brings with him in the run game that's going to make you look good, what Chip Kelly does. Um, because Chip Kelly's run run offense is not your traditional find the whole, one cut, find the whole, you know, run north-south. So, so what you're saying is we've got the same situation that we're speculating is going on on the defensive side of the ball with Larry Johnson and Jim Knowles. Only Larry Johnson is, is keeping it professional. Correct. Um, I think this could sound really bad. I think Chip Kelly's offense might be too complicated for him. I can see that. I, 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 he just does, hear, he does I can literally hear teams. people typing in the comments right now. How do you know that you keep you keyboard warrior? You've never really? coached a day in your life. I can, I can just, I can just hear it now. Go ahead. No, we don't know, but you know what? The fact is, Chip Kelly does run some complex schemes. Mm -hmm. The blocking schemes, the running, it's all very complex, and it's very intricate. And the fact is, you may be right. If, if all Tony Alford wants to do is run north-south, one cut and go, it, it, that's not going to fit into Kelly's way of doing things. Mm -mm. Kelly likes to spread the field out, go left and right a little bit more than even I like, to be honest yeah. with you. But, I mean, that's, that's – again, this is just a rumor, and that was me speculating. But, I mean, doesn't the question need to be asked? It does point? have to be asked. So, at some point, he's going to have to answer the question why he left, why he decided to go up north. And he's going to give you a political answer, and – it's it's not going to be the truth. I already know that to be a fact. 
Um, while the loser and faithful run around with their banners and waving their hands in the air about how they won again. So let, let me let me let me answer to that. I think Sharon Moore did just beat Ryan Day again. It sure seems that way. I just took your I just yeah. took one of your coaches at the same position. This was you know how when Ryan Day came in and we were all like, dude's cutthroat? He goes out and gets Justin Fields and he takes away his rival, two of his rivals coaches, and he was just you yeah. know, Sharon Moore's got a little bit of early Ryan Day about him. He's a little bit cutthroat. I'm coming after you. I don't know if I'm not early afraid Ryan of Day. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah. I've already beaten you on the field once. I was a more aggressive play caller than you were. Absolutely. Those are those are facts, dude. Those are facts. Yeah. And he just did it again. And that's, you know, I'm sure that the here's what's crazy. I've you know, I you know, I'm on Victor's Nation's face, Facebook page because yeah. they're kind and let me in. But I get to read a lot. I don't post anything, but I get to read a lot of what they say. It's about 50-50 on from their fan base on him coming up there. Half of them love it because they think it's a slap in the face of Ohio State. Half of them don't like it because they're like you and me, and they think, why? What? What would we want the rivals co- uh, coach for? He's one of them. Don't bring him in here, you know. So well, the other thing 50, is, 50. so if if he goes up there and the running game takes a step back this year, you don't think that that fan base is going to be like turn on him? Eric, of course it's going to take a step back. Look at how many guys they lost off that offensive line. Mm-hmm. Look at the fact that they've lost Blake Corm. Yeah, Donovan Edwards is still up there. And yes, Donovan Edwards is a tremendous talent. There is no denying that. But you know what did it for them was, A, they had some big bullies with a lot of experience on that offensive line. Their offensive line was good. And they had the other team's playbook. They don't have either of those things anymore. I really, they're going to take a step back, whether they want to believe it or not. I, I just, I don't think, know what Tony Alford was thinking. I, I can't imagine because everything, every way you look at this, this ends bad for him. It does. I'm trying to remember the recruit from Ohio at running back that, uh, Oh, uh, the one that uh, Marshall from Cincinnati. Yeah, well, wasn't yeah. it Marshall that uh, went there that he didn't win? <laughs> now he gets to coach him because he's going there. Yeah, um, yeah, to go with Edwards. Yeah, no, this is this is this is interesting. This is the first time this since December or since the bowl game, January, where Ohio State's taken an L in the rivalry. They've been taking a lot of L's since they hoisted the trophy. Um, and we've been taking a lot of dubs and then today that, that switched on us a little bit. So this is incredibly interesting though. And I would love to get credentials to the big 10 media days because one of my, oh, questions, absolutely. one of my questions to a uh, Sharon Moore would be, um, would be about either Mike Hart and, or Tony Alford, because I think, This is incredibly interesting. All right, let's move on. Potential candidates. Um, The name that's floating around a lot is Robert Gillespie, uh, Mm -hmm. who is the former Alabama uh, running back coach under Nick Saban. Um, He's available. He's been taking interviews. Producing high-quality backs. Yeah, with with, uh, Nick Saban retiring. Uh, that's, that's obviously the name that's being floated out there. Um, some other interesting ones, McCullough from Notre Dame. I don't know much about him. Um, we'll have to maybe talk to our buddy. But it'd be fun, it'd be fun to get him just for the sake of having a show with Kennedy, right? Well, yeah, but that's where, that's where Tony Alfred came from. He came from Notre Dame yeah. to Ohio state. Uh, Stan Drayton, the temple head coach, mm-hmm. another interesting one. Um, obviously you get the, uh, the Ohio state former Buckeyes. Let's bring one of them in crowd. Mm -hmm. And the obvious one is Eddie George. Now this is from, this is a tweet from Tim may to nip one rumor in the bud, former Ohio state, uh, Heisman trophy winning running back, Eddie George. Now the head coach at Texas state university 
has told me he is not interested in the opening in the running back uh, job, open running back job at Ohio State. However, his current running back coach and former Ohio State running back Pepe Pearson likely is. That is from Tim May. And then for the tweet of the day, you got to love Maurice Claret. Ryan Day, you making room on the staff for me? You really love me, don't you? <laughs> I love Maurice Claret. I do. Gosh, could you have, could you even imagine Maurice Claret on the staff, man? He's he's something else. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. He'd, bring, he'd bring the fire, no doubt about that. Yeah, he's got zero coaching experience. Um, but you know, Pepe Pearson's interesting because he has coaching experience. Yeah, not only uh, you know, little known fact: Pepe Pearson used to coach in Marion. He really? actually he, he coached for the uh, former Arena League team. We oh, had the Arena League, League team in Marion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, he, he had some success down here as a coach in that league. And then, of course, he's had some successes in college. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking up his uh, coaching history here. Uh, well, first off, did you know he played for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven NFL teams in four seasons? Mm-hmm. But he jumped around a little bit. Uh, so he started at Ohio Dominican as the running backs coach. So that's D2. Um, He then coached, yep, you're right, Dayton and Marion in the Arena League for five seasons, Mm -hmm. then Youngstown State for a season, then Marshall for four seasons, and then has been at Tennessee State for since 2021. Um, Wow. So I didn't know about the Marshall. Um, He's got some experience. I would say he deserves an interview. Absolutely. It's not going to hurt to get him, give him an interview. Um, who would you like to see? You don't, know, tell me, don't say Maurice Claret. <laughs> no, well, no, I mean, I think that'd be fun, but I don't think it's it's. It's not wise. realistic. It's not realistic. No. And, of course, everybody would love to see Eddie George, but, you know, I I don't think that's going to happen. He's, a, he's on the track to head coach, you know. He's got a program. He's, he's now on the Deion he's... Sanders track. I'm going to go from head yeah. coach here to a head coach at a big team, big times. If he even yeah. wants to coach outside of Tennessee, he loves the state of Tennessee. Yeah, that's yeah. his home. He's been there since he's in the NFL. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yes, he has a home in Columbus, Ohio too. He has a business here that he ran on the side. You know, uh, Eddie. What is it? Eddie George's Grill Twenty Seven Steakhouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, which I've ate there. It's a really, really nice restaurant. Yeah. Very nice. But. His home's in Tennessee, man. I don't know that he. Yeah. I think he. I think he's doing what he's doing because he loves football and he's doing it in his home state. Yeah, in his hometown. I, I'm intrigued. Intrigued by uh, Pepe Pearson. Um, I would like to see him at least talk to him. But you know, I feel like if you got a chance to get one of Saban's assistants, going after Gillespie, huh? I I would think that Gillespie is is a good choice. Like I said. That's a program that's had a lot of success. They put a lot of running backs in in the NFL, and you know what? These players are going to recognize that. Recruits are going to recognize that. So, I kind of think that that's maybe a way to lean. I mean, if we could get an Ohio State guy who's got a, a coaching experience, I would love to see that. You know, I love if I could, and we had coaching experience for the right guys. I would have nothing but Ohio State guys on this coaching staff just because, I, you know, I love our players. I love the intensity they bring. I love the fact that they're aware of the rivalry. I love the fact that they, you know, know how to win. But, you know, I think Gillespie's probably, of the names you mentioned, probably the best choice. Stan Drayton was at Ohio State and actually recruited and coached Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, that's true. But would he leave a head coaching job to come back? I After mean, that, Kelly. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gillespie, obviously, I think is the one that everybody's excited about if he's given the opportunity. But I'm not against Drake. No, I'm I wouldn't be a, against it. No, I would. I think that that would be a win. Uh, uh, sorry, Stan Drayton, not Drake. Gosh, that's terrible. Uh, Stan Drayton. Um, Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. What we don't know 
and what no one's really dug into yet is how deep the running back tree goes for Chip Kelly. And I think this is yeah. going to be his decision along with, you know, the oversight from Ryan Day, but this will be Chip's decision on who gets this job. And, you know, one of the reasons why this job might even be open is because Chip is here, like we said. Like, share, subscribe. It really does help the channel. Leave us uh, who you would like to see in the comments below. If you're watching this as a Team Up North troll, congratulations for giving me a click and making some more money for us. We really do appreciate that. Go ahead and gloat in the comments below, which I'm sure you're going to do anyways. And uh, Buckeye Nation, feel free to make fun of them. Um, Yes, take another victory lap if you want, but you literally are an emperor with no clothes on. That's what you guys are right now. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it, so enjoy while you can. Uh, but like, share, subscribe. We really do appreciate that. We're going to be doing a live call-in show, 8 p.m. Eastern, Friday night. We want to hear from you, Buckeye Nation, about this. We're sure that you all are going to have a lot of thoughts that you want to talk about, just like Chris and I did tonight as well, about this <coughs> move. Um, do you feel betrayed? Who would you like to see? Um, we're going to we're gonna open up the phone lines Friday night for all of you as well. I don't know if you noticed, Eric, but uh, Brian Oberst and uh, Jay Richardson, they, they've, been, uh, they've been very active on our chat. So, well, first of all, apparently I was the original suggestion for who we should replace the head coach with. Or the, the running back coach with, yeah. Nice. And, yeah. I don't know where that came from. And then, uh, of course, they started in with the Mike Hart talk. I think just trying to get my blood pressure up. <laughs> now, I didn't mention him tonight. I didn't bring him up because I didn't want you to get into that. I don't even know if that's even an option because this there's could it be some It should not be an option. In no way, shape, or form should it be an option. It is not I mean, an option to bring one of the spies down here let me ask to you a infiltrate question. our program. Let me ask you a question. Do you think he's a better running back? Taking the teams out of it, do you think he's a better running back coach than Tony Alford? Performance on the field over the last few years would say yes. Okay. That's all I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. We'll see but you all. still lose a read. We'll see you all Friday night at 8 o'clock. Also, you can join, become an official member of the OHIO podcast. Just $3.99 a month, you'll get yourself a t-shirt. Behind the scenes, free content, all kinds of great stuff like that. Uh, that uh, and, and free things that YouTube offers you as well. If you become a member, just hit the join button uh, on our uh, YouTube homepage. So go to the whole YouTube homepage here. See join, join, put in your information. Bada boom, bada bing, you're an official member of the OHIO podcast. We'll see you all Friday night. Till next time, go Bucks.